Hey neighbor, today we're gonna to talk about a simple garden tool that works. We're gonna talk about where it works best at, where it does not work best at, what it's meant to do and what it's not meant to do. And I think you're gonna find this intriguing. This tool here has been around for a long time, proven that it helps you grow your own food. And what I'm talking about, my friend, is the wheel hoe or push plows called by a few different names here. But right here is our whole single wheel wheel hoe. Push plow, it, it really doesn't matter. It all does the same thing. I'll give you a little bit of history on these things right here. Now, back in the late 1800s, there was a few manufacturers of these plows, and most of them looked the same. There were some, some small differences in some of them. And then in the early 1900s, the popularity of these things really jumped up as there was a lot of people growing their own food. Now, around the end of World War II, somewhere in there, you know, the government started this program called the Victory Garden, where they was really encouraging people to grow Victory Gardens at their home to have a sustainable supply of food because they was worried about food supplies. And that's probably the heyday of the push plow or the wheel hoe was during that time. You know, every little family had a garden spot where they grew the majority of their food. It just, it's just the way it was back then. Now, as we moved on up into the 60s and the 70s, that kind of waned a little bit. The economy was doing good. People would move to the cities to work. A lot of people got away from gardening. Now, our horse wheel hoe, we started making back in around 2008, but this history of this wheel hoe goes back to the late 1800s, where a company called Planet Junior was making nearly this identical wheel hoe. They made it all the way up to around 1967. And that's a long time. Uh, they sold tens of thousands of them all over the country. That company went out of business around 1967. A couple more companies picked them up for a year or two, but they finally died out. We bought one off of eBay around 2007, started reverse engineering it, trying to duplicate that because it was a wonderful design and it worked good. So there, we got it going about 2009, and we've made some additions to it, and uh, man, we got all kind of implements. It's just too many for me to mention here how many implements we got and how many configurations you can do these things. But now let's talk about where the wheel hoe comes into play, where it's its best use. Now, if you got raised beds, or maybe you just got a little bitty garden, maybe like a 10 by 10, the wheel hoe's probably not gonna be for you. I think the minimal size garden that you can start using the wheel hoe and, and, and using it efficiently is gonna be somewhere around the 20 by 20 in ground garden. Once you get to that stage, it starts coming in handy, being able to help you keep that, uh, that garden weed free and help you manage that garden. Although back in the early 1900s, wheel hoes were used on larger farms, five to six, 10 acre farms. We've seen pictures back then where they just had them lined up, people working the soils. I don't think in today's environment, a wheel hoe would work well for a market farm or for a small farm that's three to four acres or larger. I just think there's better options out there for cultivation than the wheel hoe is. Now, small market farms up to maybe an acre to two acres at the most and home gardeners that like to grow in ground. You got a larger family, three to four to five, six people that you're trying to feed. You want to preserve a lot of food out of your garden. I think the wheel hoe, that's its sweet spot there where you're growing in ground and you're growing a decent amount of food. For the most part, a wheel hose purpose is cultivation. Now, that being said, we do have some attachments that are kind of different from that. We got the dibble wheel, we got the drip layer attachments that fit on the wheel hose so you can do other things. But the majority of the attachments and the majority of the purpose of the wheel hoe is cultivation. Now, this right here is a tiller. A lot of people get it confused with what a tiller should do and what a wheel hose should do and they're completely different. Both of them actually complement one another. This tiller right here is meant to break new ground and get the new ground worked. Once we get our new ground worked, then we switch over to the wheel hoe and the wheel hoe is a cultivation tool at that point. Wheel hoes are not meant to go out there and break this up. This is where that tiller comes in handy. The problem with tillers are they work the soil real aggressively and they can cause some problems losing our tilt in the soil and just beating our soils to death. So I always say, make sure you use a tiller 
like you should. Don't use it no more than you have to. It's a great tool, but you overuse it, you're gonna cause some major problems with your soil. I like to use my tiller uh, when I'm beginning to work my soil, maybe extinguishing cover crops, but after that, I do not use my tiller very often in my garden once I start the planting process. Now this right here is a BCS. Let me tell you just a little side note here. I got a friend up in Kentucky called Earth Tools. He sells these BCS, he's the largest BCS dealer in the country. Also, he sells a brand called Grillo. So if you are in the need of a good tiller, check out Earth Tools, give Joel a call, wealth of information and great people to do business with if you want a high end or a great quality walk behind tiller. All right, I'm gonna give you a fine example where the wheel hoe comes into play in the garden. This spot right here, as you can see, is where I got my potatoes coming up. And we got four inches of rain last Saturday, and we've got weeds coming up. The ground's kind of compacted. It needs to be worked. My potatoes need to be healed. Instead of bringing the tiller in here and working through there, number one is my tiller is too big to get in between these rows. These are 36 inch rows. So if you had a smaller tiller, you could possibly run it down through there, but my tiller's too big, but I don't want to run my tiller through there anyway because I don't want to overwork my soils. The wheel hose a perfect example of what we want to go in there and do today. So I want to go through there and I want to bust up that crust of that soil and I want to kill those weeds. Easy peasy, just push it through there. Now it's going to take me a couple of uh, trips down through there to get this middle bust up. Then we're gonna go through there and we're gonna take the wheel hoe and we're gonna heal our potatoes. So we've run our cultivator tea through here. We busted up, got our weeds uprooted there, but we didn't beat our soils up. See those clumps right there? Those clumps are actually good. Keeps our soil nice and healthy. We got some organic matter in there that's breaking down. Got microbes alive in the soil and that's a good thing. So if we run a tiller through here, it'd be more powderish, beat to death, we don't like that. Shallow cultivation with the wheel, wheel hoe. We didn't get into the roots of the potatoes like we could do with the tiller. That's one of the main reasons that I love that wheel hoe for shallow cultivation. As I mentioned earlier, boy, the wheel hoe's just got a multitude of uses. I could spend hours out here showing you different setups and things like that. One of the favorite ways I love to use the wheel hoe is healing healing my corn and healing my potatoes. Today we're going to heal these ash potatoes. I've got my hot arc wheel hoe set up with my plow set on there. Now I could do this with a double wheel hoe, but I don't have as much clearance as I do with the high arc. The high arc sweet spot is being able to straddle the row and to heal. And this is just what I love to do right here. I'm going to show you what a great job it does going in there pulling that soil up to the plant, almost covering it up, which is what we want to do with Irish potatoes. All right, I'm gonna show you another application that we use the wheel hoe for. So I need to transplant some of my tom onions today. And this will work with any kind of onion right here, but I'm using my dibble wheel attachment. That dibble wheel attached is gonna punch the hole in my soil and lay out the exact spacing I need, which makes it easy. Now there's different ways you can set that dibble wheel up. You could take every other dibble off to get further spacing, but the way it's set up right there is ideal for me for my onions. Just stick it in there and cover them up. Well, I got my dibble already done for my onions and it's laid off the exact space that I want, so I don't have to worry about getting out here and, and trying to measure off. Well, we've done a lot of work trying to come up with newer implements that fits the bill to do different things. A lot of you guys have different soils than me. A lot of people always comment, well, your soils look really nice. Well, they do, thank you. And I know some of you guys are probably working with stiffer, harder clay soils, but we have different implements that kind of, we hope, work in all different kind of soils here. Now this right here is a 12 inch oscillating blade that cuts underneath the soil there and cuts those weeds off. It works wonderful for my type of soils. This also comes in eight inch. So you guys that's got those hard clay soils, I think an eight inch is probably a better, better choice for you. But I just want to show you how easy this thing works going through there, cutting those weeds off, shallow cultivation, that's the key there. I'm not getting into roots of my plants, but yet I'm able to go through there and kill those weeds, 
up close to the plant. So if you're trying to grow a decent amount of food to put up to feed your larger family or even maybe a small family, but you love the garden, I think a wheel hose is one of those simple old timey tools that has a place in the garden if you garden in ground and you don't do large scale five to 10 acre gardening. You know, these things are made in the USA. They'll last forever. They don't have a motor on them. You can stick them up in the shed and they're handy to use. And I will bet you your forefathers use this right here sometime in their life to feed their family.